This movie is super top secret. It's like the Beyonce album drop of movies. <laughs> totally. <laughs> what has it been like to maintain that secrecy from when you got the script up until now? You know, it's been kind of a roller coaster because initially it wasn't very hard because we were just focused on making this movie and, you know, you don't really talk to many people outside of the, the crew when you're making a movie. So we were just in our little bubble. And then months later, once people started asking me about it, I just kind of tried to keep it to the basic logline if I could, mainly just because I didn't want to spoil it for people. I didn't want to tell people too much about this movie because it's a mystery movie, you know, you don't want to sort of give the whole thing away. But I didn't know what the marketing was going to be like. I didn't know that they were going to be withholding so much information. So there was definitely a point where I was kind of like, um, hello, is this movie coming out? What's it going to be called? Anybody know? You know. Um, so I was very excited once the information finally started coming out. And your character, Michelle, is just as in the dark as the audience is in the movie. Yes. Were you given much background information on her and on what's happening above ground? The background information on her was kind of a collaboration, mostly between myself and Dan Trachtenberg, the director, um, because it was pretty bare bones in the script, but that was something that was intentional. They kind of wanted the chance for me to be able to, to create that myself and, and bring to Michelle something that we could work on together. And then we all kind of together sort of created a scene where you get like a little bit of a glimpse into her regrets and, and her history and, and the sort of messiness in her life that she's coming into the story with. Um, but I think it's really great that it's kept a little bit mysterious and we're not beating the audience over the head with like all this exposition about who she is and, and where she comes from. Um, and then what was the second part of your question? How much were you told about what's actually oh. going on above ground? Well, I mean, really, you know, I think for the most part, I knew as much as Michelle knows in the film and, and really as much as the audience knows. And beyond that, that was something that was left to the sort of post-production team to kind of figure out. And you and John Goodman have a lot of really intense moments in this movie, and he's a really creepy character. What was that atmosphere like on set between you two? It was great. I mean, it was kind of confusing at first to be watching him, you know, someone who I've grown up loving my entire life be terrorizing me and intimidating me and yelling at me. I think inside there was like a part of me that was like, why are you doing this, John Goodman? I love you. Um, but as soon as, you know, I got, got sort of into the film a little bit, I was just like, it made it so easy to act opposite him because he's just so good. And he can turn on a dime. He can go from just having a casual conversation to suddenly, you know, the camera starts rolling and his voice is just so intense and just booms. And like, you can just hear it throughout the whole warehouse, you know, um, like it's just like comes from somewhere so deep inside and it's, it's incredibly affecting. If you were preparing for the apocalypse and went into a bunker, what are three things that you would take with you? I would have to have music of some sort. I would have to have like an iPod or, you know, maybe a jukebox like we see in the movie or something. I'd have to have um, some sort of connection to the outside world, you know, like some like some plants or flowers or something that I could try to keep alive. Um, and what else? I mean, I've been saying my dogs. I re we really need to have my dogs because I would just be like way too depressed without them. So I'm not sure how much fun they'd have in a bunker. <laughs> But selfishly, I want them there. <laughs> and would you say that the events in this movie take place in the same universe as the events of Cloverfield? I don't think so. I don't think it's connected in that sort of linear way. I don't think it's got any sort of chron chronologically connected in any way. I think it's, it's its own thing. And I think the connection that's there is that it's, it's in the same spirit of that. And I think JJ, from what I've heard, you know, he'd like to, to make several films that kind of feel like they're a part of the same spiritual connection. I think